shopping and <laughs> Wait, vampires can't kill vampires? Welcome back, super friends and super family. I am Thor, your friendly neighborhood god of thunder. Today I'm reacting to Supernatural Season 5, Episode 4. And I forgot to turn on my screen recording. I forgot to do this correct. I, I just, I think I completely forgot um, how to live as a human being right now. Enough of that. Let's get into the Buffy reaction. So last episode of Buffy, uh, it was kind of like a supernatural rom-com episode, uh, a little bit of a more comedic tone than usual, at least for me. Maybe some people take it pretty serious. I mean, it ended up pretty serious for her roommate there. But um, yeah, it was, <laughs> the directing was very different. The tone was different. And I, I kind of had a blast with it. It was a nice, uh, not what I would have expected for the second episode, more what I would have expected maybe five or six episodes into the show, just a one-off episode is a little bit crazy, a little bit of a different tone, but I am I was down for it. I really enjoyed it. I had a fun time with it, um, and now as we go into the third episode, I just, I don't really have any predictions. I'm excited to see it. I don't know. Are we going to see, you know, my main anticipation at this point is seeing the big bad of this season because I feel like it's a very open, you know, we've had some pretty epic villains, both, you know, big bads like the mayor or the master. But we've also had some side villains who are very cool. I'm not going to rant about my love of villains for too long here, but just uh, that that's what I'm anticipating the most so far is maybe there won't even be a big bad. That would be crazy, right? Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Another thing I'm also excited for, obviously, Spike and Drusilla. Hopefully, they might not even show up this season. Who knows? And Faith, maybe she doesn't show up this season either. But please don't let me know in the comments because you know I don't know. It would be a nice surprise, and I'm sure you'd enjoy the reaction if it happens. But uh, those are just kind of my thoughts before going into this episode. As always, if you want to watch the full unedited reaction, um, that's going to be up on Patreon as well as next week's reaction. I'm also reacting to Angel. Like I said, at the time of recording, I don't know if I'm going to be re releasing the Angel episodes on YouTube. really just depends on the audience interest, but for sure it's going to be on Patreon. So if you want to see the next episode of Angel, probably the next episode of Buffy as well, you can... Check out Patreon and support me there. Thank you to everyone who does it. But for now, let's just get into today's reaction. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Season 4, Episode 3. Look at that, Oz performing on stage. It's great that he's continued to play in a band and that they've, you know, had some success. You know, at least they have an audience and some fans. We hung out, moderately incessantly, but we're not here together tonight. You know, I don't... So as she moved on past Angel, I guess we all should move on since that relationship, I believe, is officially done for good. Q Taylor Swift's We Are Never Getting Back Together. Mm -hmm. Alright, so is this episode going to focus on uh, Buffy moving on past Angel? little romantic life for our protagonist? I mean with real glue. <laughs> you got that right? I got that. <laughs> okay, in two seconds I immediately like Devin. Hey, I haven't seen you since graduation. Big snake, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely the topic of conversation, that monster that tried to kill everybody. I was dying to see the stores. Oh, and museums. Museums? She's like, no, I, I don't have those same interests, Willow. <laughs> You're always so funny, Willow. You haven't changed a bit. No. Nope. That feels condescending. I don't like her. Of course she turned to a vampire. Wait, hold on. Excuse me, you cannot just bite Willow this early on in the episode. What the heck is this? Did that happen? Are we in a dream sequence? Are we going to have more vampire Willow? I mean, we can't have Willow turn into a vampire. Especially just like out of nowhere like that. Maybe I did wasn't paying close enough attention and... She didn't fully bite her neck yet. I don't know. Hide behind your boyfriend. But guess what? I have a boyfriend too. And he's going to be mad that you were mean to me. 
I love how with her vampire face and everything, she's still talking just like an insecure high school girl. You have a scar. Right. Um, Has that always been there since the beginning of the season? Angry puppy. So... This is the problem, though. Like, how do you date someone as a vampire slayer without being able to communicate and be honest about that huge part of your life? Don't you just hate guys who are all... I'm dark and brooding so give me love like no that's actually my type <laughs> that'd be so hilarious if she's just like you know what i can't date you anymore but i don't i don't put stuff off anymore like you were saying i think that's smart you know seize the moment it's cool to find someone else who understands and just like that they have a deep connection when you go to sleep tonight what are you gonna regret not doing today not going for the kiss. I'm not enjoying this. Well, show them correctly and we can finish. Was that a meaningful, like, cross-edit of Xander's dialogue saying I'm not enjoying this as we are still lingering on a shot of Buffy happy during a date? I think that was purposeful. Would you look at that? Oh, look who it is. I need to talk to Xander. Go away. <laughs> Why did she come back? Yeah, need some money. And... So where's our relationship going? Excuse me? What relationship? Our what? Our who? Relationship. What kind do we have? She really likes him, doesn't she? Uh, we have a relationship. We went to the prom. <laughs> Oh, that's right. That means you have a ring. <laughs> Only date. Second date called on account of Snake, remember? And there's the whole... Are they going to be a couple this whole season? Is that what we're leading towards? I can assume a standing Friday night date and a mutual recognition of prom night is our dating anniversary. Anya, slow down. <laughs> halt. See, these things kind of have to develop on their own. All right. I know, it's the way she's putting it, it's almost like a relationship is a math equation, and it's kind of hilarious and awesome. <laughs> it just happens. You know what? I actually think her being that straightforward with Xander might work. Xander might appreciate that, you know, a girl just openly telling him how attractive he is. Hey! Oh, look who interrupted the perfect moment. Remember Harmony? She's back from her summer vacation, and she's a little different. Good thing that bite didn't go as badly as I thought it was going right away when we cut to the opening montage. I, I should really take care of this now. Oh, I'll pick you up tomorrow night for the party. I can't wait. Is she going to miss the party? Harmony's a vampire? She must be dying without a reflection. <laughs> That's a great line. Are you for real? Unfortunately, I saw in the credits that he was going to be in this episode, but really? Dating Harmony? Spike, you have sunk far from Drusilla, my friend. <laughs> it's definitely the crypt, right? I'm not keen on tunneling into someone's septic tank. It's if Drusilla comes in, though, I'll be so pumped. It is awesome just having Spike in this episode, though. Hum, does this look like a good time to talk? Are you going to kill Willow today? I don't see the chemistry between the two of them, like... With Spike and Harmony, girl. I just don't see and then, it. And no. it looks like she's being pretty annoying. <laughs> this one tastes funny. Take me out to eat. He's perfectly fresh. This poor guy. Right here, baby. In front of Brian. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Yes, she would. Tonight, I'll take you somewhere nice. Well, what the heck is Spike up to? Tunneling to where? Kind of like under the bronze to just feed on people. No, let's have a meaningful talk instead. It's gonna have to go somewhere where the music isn't quite so loud. Oh, look who it is! Literally, they're just at this party. So much for a low profile, bro. Last year. Well, this is interesting. It is interesting. Hi, I'm Parker. I like him. <laughs> Vulnerability. And you with Harmony. Hmm. What'd you lose a bet? Hey! <laughs> Drew dump you again? 
Maybe I dumped her. Ah, uh, that's unlikely. No one dumps Drusilla. She left him for a fungus demon. That's all he talks about most. A fungus demon? What the heck are you doing, Drusilla? Yeah, but as soon as we have the gem of Amara, you're gonna be so <laughs> dumb. What? Ow. She's so dumb. <laughs> The gem of Amara, is that what she said? What kind of magical, powerful item is this gonna be? Come in. Well, yeah, Xander, for sure you guys are getting back together. I'm honestly so glad she's back. You know, it is customary to call before you show up. Not the Holy. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely getting back together. <laughs> Oh, uh, Anya, that's so funny. The gem of Amara, you sure? Yeah. What's up? Oh, uh, it's, it's, it's just, it's, um, it's not real. I'm betting it is real. Yes, well, I'll research it as best I can. You've done all you can for tonight. Go to bed. Giles seems a little bit distracted, right? Can I make him a vampire? No. <laughs> Go do that. Take your time. Do Melanie and the kids as well. <laughs> I think this is what all their conversations are like. Can we eat a doctor so I can get a stethoscope and hear my heart not beating? Oh my gosh. What does it take to get you to shut the hell up? <laughs> that doesn't work, Spike. It just turns her on. I think this relationship works for one reason. <laughs> At which point the matter is brought to a conclusion with both parties satisfied. She's been talking this whole time? It's an interest. To sum up, I think it's a workable plan. <laughs> so? Is she, like, related to Sherlock Holmes? You're funny and you're nicely shaped, and frankly, it's ludicrous to have these interlocking bodies and not interlock. <laughs> well, when you put it like that. And the amazing thing? Still more romantic than Faith. I mean, that is 100,000% true. I was about to say the amazing thing is that, Xander, you've waited this long to say yes, but... Sorry, it's just... The English guy is uh, an old friend. Can Parker really be trusted to, you know, know the secrets of the gang? You and he used to, like, go out? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was an amazing laugh. Buffy seems like so into him. More than I would have thought, but I mean, I guess I just hit it off right from the beginning. You always have a choice with everything you do. A good line to say before going for a kiss. What are you doing? I'm moving on and making a choice too. It would actually be hilarious if, like, it cut to a wide shot and Angel had shown up from L.A. just to randomly see this moment. Oh, no, are they going to get interrupted because of Giles' research? More bad timing. Now this makes me curious if he's going to, as Buffy's love interest, is he going to become one of the members of the Scoobies? Or is he still evil? I still have like a 10% suspicion right now. Parker? No way he left. I don't believe it. What happened? Did Spike show up in the middle of the night and steal him away? Everybody needs pants. Hey, girl. Oh, there he is. Well, I was going to go with pants, but uh, <laughs> kiss is good too. A kiss, then pants. So I, I'm over you now. <laughs> um, uh, really? Okay. This seems so awkward. Okay? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Ooh. 
It's so interesting, like, seeing all the parallel, like, romantic relationships here between different characters. I don't know. It's fun. I'm bored. You can write on me. <laughs> this is the most fun to watch. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Syphilis more than you. <laughs> Whoever had the idea of pairing Spike up with Harmony and him just being perpetually annoyed, that was a genius creative idea. I'm an adult, then. It's none of your business where I was. I'm sincerely relieved to hear it. Uh, now, um... <laughs> It seems that Spike may know what it's about, that the gem may exist after all. I mean, of course, of course, you guys. It happened, right? Did it happen? <laughs> well, and details. I mean, not details. I, I don't need a diagram, but, you know, like maybe a blurry watercolor. <laughs> I don't know why I let you be so mean to me. Love hurts, baby. Dang, that's a pretty that's a pretty callous reply there, Spike. But there's no way she's following that order. I mean, if you know anything about her. Hi, it's me. I'm a Giles. Did Parker call yet? Dang, no call from Parker. I feel like he's gonna have a good reason. I feel like they're playing up the drama, like with Buffy being concerned. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe Parker. You know. It's hard. I mean, we've all been there, right? I feel like more now, more with texting than calling. But, you know, sitting there hoping someone's going to text you, waiting, overthinking things. Am I crazy and kind of hoping Spike succeeds? I don't think he's going to. Ooh, pretty. Can I take stuff? <laughs> I, mean, I don't think it's don't working. If you wondered. <laughs> Careful, dude. <laughs> it's worth money anyway. That would be something. And then we could go to France. And I always wanted to go to France. Still France. Shopping and <laughs> Wait, vampires can't kill vampires? What are you doing, you big freak? What the heck? Also, like, makes you invincible. That's crazy, though. He literally killed her. I mean, she... Uh, I, I have always disliked Harmony since she's been, you know, mean to Cordelia, but she was so funny with Spike, I was kind of enjoying it. And in breaking local news, area residents <laughs> face traffic disruptions... Public television! Oh, Giles. What happened? I mean, it hit me hard, you know? My dad. Since then, I just don't put stuff off anymore. Oh, what? Seriously, dude? Buffy... Buffy Summers, this is Katie Loomis. Oh, what a loser. What a loser. You know, to be honest, I wasn't warming up to him personally. I was like, just the whole time I was thinking, Angel is better than this dude. And it looks like I had a good instincts about this guy. You didn't call. Like, I mean, I'd understand that, you know, if you were busy or... Does Buffy not realize? Am I misreading the situation? I don't think so. Oh, well... The thing is, I think I'm supposed to get together with some people later. Here come the excuses. Um, did I? You didn't do anything wrong, Buffy. It's not you. What? Some kind of commitment? I mean, is that really what you want right now? Oh, poor Buffy. Well, that was pathetic. Holy... Wait, what? Oh, because he's out in sunlight, of course. Oh, do it again. It tickles. It's like Achilles' heel. You just gotta cut off his finger. Where's Smeagol when you need him? About you know, what happened. Well, I said I was over you. I mean, I. Anya, I don't have time. Oh, dang it. Everyone's getting hurt this episode. Like, I wouldn't have just given it to him, I would have given him anything he wanted. She sounds like such a little girl. It's sad, like, even as an evil vampire, you know? <laughs> Cut off the finger. That's your only hope. Some good stunt work. Dang. Dang. 
Come on, Xander. I mean, that didn't work at all, but it's still pretty brave of Xander. Come to think of it, it seems like someone told me as much. Who was that? Oh, yeah. Angel. Oh, come on. He obviously didn't. But it's kind of cool how it made Buffy, like, regain some of her strength with anger. That was a mistake there, Spike. Oh! You don't yes. This way. Yeah, he's right in the sun. He's lucky that was there. He could jump away quickly. They weren't fighting in the shade there. He would have been gone. R.I.P. Spike. Really worth getting my ribs bashed in. It's obviously very dangerous. And, uh, I'm destroying it. It's like the one ring with little green <laughs> touch. How he gets his hands on this is going to be essentially unkillable. Destroy it. Throw it into the fire. She's giving the ring to Angel. Don't make a fuss. Buffy, are you sure? Oh, they're gonna make Angel invincible. It's actually really smart. He was saying that so you would take a chance and sleep with him. He's a poop head. <laughs> That's also a great way to put it, Willow. Repulsive about me, you tell me, right? I'm your friend. I would call you repulsive in a second. <laughs> that's, that's true and funny, but maybe not the best comforting words right now. You can still work it out? I think you're missing something about the whole poop head principle. Yeah. But you can understand, especially someone so young, like why they're having these feelings and thoughts. They both had a uh, rough, all three of them have had it rough romantically, right? They need to go meet up somewhere, have margaritas and talk about evil men. <laughs> and that's how the episode ends. I feel like that was a meaningful shot having all three of them and then cutting to that wide. All right, so that is Buffy the Vampire Slayer season four, episode three. I really enjoyed that episode. It was great, of course, to have Spike back. Um, but surprisingly, I, I don't even think that was my favorite aspect of this episode. I... What I really enjoyed about this episode was I think that it essentially was just a, a little study or observation about uh, romantic relationships and in particular some of the difficulties that can be experienced. And I think that final shot with the three girls kind of shows it's you know, it, it showed all the dynamics, but I think it actually showed more of a focus on a, a woman's point of view and some of the just the, the, the things that can suck or the difficulties of navigating the space of love, of romance, of attraction. And I liked that. I, I like dealing with a theme that you can see spread across different characters and how that keeps, you know, even as the different events and the A and B storylines of the particular episode, like what's literally happening is going on. It's all, you know, tying into this theme about love and about romance and in different unique ways you know Anya Harmony and Buffy are three very different types of people very very different personalities and they're dating or romantically interested in very different people I mean just to simplify Parker what a loser I mean right I that I'm telling I didn't want to like trash on the guy uh I wish I had actually because then we would have you know you don't have to take my word for it that that's kind of what I was thinking in my head I just as he was like first kind of like courting Buffy in the first half of the episode I was just inwardly rolling my eyes a little bit um like I said I wish I had said I, I wanted to hold back because I feel like sometimes I form judgments on characters a little bit too quickly but I think my instincts for Parker were were right in this case um, and I think that it's a good timing of the show to kind of have something like this happen. I think that it's very age appropriate. I mean, how I think there is a bit of a learning curve. You know, you, you, of course, figure out things in high school and you figure out some things, you know, in relationships oftentimes. But college is a little bit of a different step. You know, you're out in the wider world and in that 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 sphere also includes, you know, r romance and dating. And here Buffy was thinking she had met the perfect guy who was saying all the right things and, you know, being vulnerable when he could tell Buffy wanted to see that and being charming and just, you know, someone who is who knew the moves to do to get Buffy to feel very attracted and comfortable with him and clearly, you know, was doing it just to uh, just to sleep with her, you know. And I also really like um, how the show shows how painful that is. And how Buffy's instincts is not immediately to just say, oh, this guy's a loser, let me move on, I'm a strong woman. You know, 
you can be a strong person. Buffy is incredibly strong. Buffy is an independent person, but it still is painful when that happens to you. And I like how, you know, even as Willow at the end is, you know, talking to her, being like, oh, he's horrible. You know, Buffy is still thinking like, oh, maybe, you know, I can get him to like me. Maybe it was me. Maybe something wrong. I don't know. I just, once again, another example of the show having a strong protagonist, but having them experience real human emotion and not being just some invincible, perfect person. Instead, Buffy, you know, it it just, it connects. Like, we've all been there. We've all been hurt romantically. We've all been in a situation where maybe not the exact circumstance that Buffy went through, although it's pretty common, right? I'm sure many, many people watching have been through something almost identical to what Buffy went through in this episode. But we've all been in situations where you get hurt by someone who, you know, tricks you or is manipulative or is selfish, And uh, a lot of times, I think, especially when it is in the sphere of romance and has to do with your feelings, you can logically know in your brain the person is kind of a garbage person or at least treated you unfairly. But that doesn't mean you don't have these, you know, feelings are not logical, you know. So you can have these insecurities about yourself or even these desires to try to get back with this person even though you know in your head that they mistreated you or are not good for you and so I just seeing that struggle for Buffy you know it's painful to watch because I'm rooting for Buffy obviously um part of me is relieved that Parker is not going to be the love interest at least it doesn't seem like it after this episode because I like I said I just I I wasn't really warming up to the guy and I was kind of just biting my tongue to see maybe if he would get a little bit better. I don't know what it was that rubbed me the wrong way. Maybe just my instincts, or maybe I just had some bias towards the guy, or maybe just because I'm a fan of Buffy and Angel, so I just another romantic guy. I was like, eh, is this really going to work? Anyways, I, I, I'm a little bit relieved that hopefully won't be seeing too much of Parker in the future, and if it is, maybe he'll be a vampire like Harmony or something. And speaking of Harmony, let's get into Harmony, because I, you know, like I mentioned briefly during the reaction, you know, I, I have never been Harmony's fan. I have always been against Harmony. I think we've only seen her in a couple of episodes, but she was one of the ringleaders, you know, bullying Cordelia and giving her a hard time and just seemed like an overall nasty, you know, like a Rachel McAdams mean girl without the the humor that Rachel McAdams has. I mean, I love mean girls. That's a whole nother side tangent about how great Rachel McAdams is. Um, But in a weird way, I was kind of liking Harmony this episode. (laughs) I wouldn't have thought it possible. If you told me that Harmony was going to be in this episode, the first thing I would say is, who is Harmony? And then when I saw her and I remembered, I, um, I would say, there's no way I'm going to like her this episode. And I don't really like her, but... The just the whole dynamic with her and Spike was undeniably amusing. I mean, just seeing her act like a, a teenager with no sense of tact and just personality wise did not seem like the type of person who Spike would actually enjoy their company. I mean, obviously, there's some physical attraction. I don't think there is anything else whatsoever, at least for Spike. I don't think for Harmony really either, you know. I She probably was infatuated because she just thinks Spike is cool. But I really didn't the, – the scenes of them together, I really didn't think there was anything substantial. You know, if I was Dr. Phil sitting in and watching, giving advice, I would say you guys are just not meant to be together. But but I, I towards the end, you know, it was kind of painful. Like Spike was as annoying as Harmony was being and, you know, she's – She's so, like, you can't really blame her for acting that way, for being so young and immature and just, you know, that's who she is at this point. And it was kind of rough. Like, it was pretty brutal when Spike just stabbed her with a stake. I I, I like that moment that during the reaction I blanked and was like, oh, can vampires not get killed anymore? I'm sure there will be many comments being like, have you not watched this show, how many times Angel has killed vampires? And the answer is no. My I have short-term memory loss and... My memory of lore and past events is beyond horrific. <laughs> but um, I, I feel like I'm all over the place right now. But yeah, it was it was rough. It was rough. I feel like um, it it's a little bit mind-boggling how Harmony and Spike first got together because he so clearly like <laughs> was annoyed with her. But uh, I'm happy it happened. If if just for the fact that we had those scenes of him, you know sitting on the bed, you know, just so irritated as she's continually talking. I, I don't know why that was so, so amusing to me. Let me know if anyone else thought that was great, too. Um, but but similar to, um, I believe it's Lover's Walk in last season where Spike shows up just for one episode, but he kind of has a great moment talking about Buffy and Angel, calling them out on their relationships. 
and just the dynamic between the two of them. I feel like it was very true to character and just enjoyable with the whole theme of romance and love and some of the difficulty and struggles revolving in that aspect of life sometimes. Um, that Spike, as he was fighting Buffy in the sunlight, which, side note, was a cool visual, seeing Spike in the sunlight not being killed. You know, we've never seen that before. You know, vampire in the sun. You know, he was kind of mocking Buffy uh, about her, her the one-night stand that she was involved in and her hurt feelings. And I think uh, that, that Spike was the perfect person to be kind of delivering those lines. Just was so true to his character, and it kind of hammered home the idea of the episode so i really appreciated that in the writing of this episode and then anya anya and xander that's that's interesting i think anya i i definitely like anya more than harmony for sure you know i i enjoyed seeing both of those things play out but anya it's she may be evil but it's hard to stay angry at her there's just something and and the way she even like handled her relationship with xander it was so um i mentioned sherlock holmes because the way she was just like breaking things down logically was pretty hilarious it's like are you related to sheldon from the big bang theory or something lady (laughs) but but it was funny it was just funny to see and then I, I kind of appreciate her vulnerability i like how frustrated she got when you know xander didn't didn't say the right thing at the right moment and it's just uh, something about her being you know how old is she exactly i don't know how many years she's been alive but for her you know just her being stuck in a teenage girl's body with those feelings i've always thought that's funny and then to see her um just you know maddingly maddingly i feel like i'm not maddingly i can't speak english maddingly infatuated does that make sense? She's infatuated with Xander. I don't know. That, that was just amusing to watch. And I actually don't think, I hope that's not the last we see of her. I don't think it is. I actually wouldn't be surprised if um, Anya and Xander got together because she, she has, she's not, you know, Cordelia level, but she has a little Cordelia energy to her. And I think that Xander, you know, I don't know, maybe something about her straightforward nature and how open she is about um how attracted she is to xander like xander might find that flattering i feel like maybe not but i think so and i don't know that i could see them having a relationship that actually works out where they kind of are arguing back and forth but it's playful romantic banter you know it's kind of like their way of flirting in a similar way that cordelia and xander would argue all the time before making out maybe in a more healthy dynamic though because i think that anya has an appreciation for you know, like things like Xander's sense of humor or his comedic timing or his own, you know, she she might even recognize like his bravery in a way um, because he does have it. He, you know, he's not the John Wayne style of brave or courageous, but Xander definitely has some good traits that are admirable, you know, that you could see being attractive to someone. So um, I, I think I think Anya sees that side of Xander for sure. Um, so I'm, I'm almost rooting for them. I am definitely rooting for Anya to be in the show more. And it sucks, too, because unlike Harmony and Spike, where I think Spike truly didn't care about Harmony at all, um, Xander, I could see him caring for Anya. I think that it was just kind of bad timing where there was something really important going on and he couldn't explain it. I also think Xander is maybe a little bit confused. He probably hasn't encountered someone who is just being as... I don't want to say aggressive. What's what's the word for someone who's just so <laughs> like Anya in in the relationship when going after what they want? I don't know. I think that's kind of an admirable trait in a way. I think it takes some courage, but I think Xander just maybe isn't used to that. So it's he's a little bit confused on what to do. Or maybe he just needs some time to process it because he's not even sure how he feels. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But I, I'm holding a little bit of hope for the two of them. But overall, I just... Um, that was cool. That was kind of cool focusing on three different female characters and all of them dealing with some romantic struggles that can be very relevant to real life and in particular real life at that stage where you're you're just kind of growing up, you know, in the college days. Just per- perfect in that sense. I'm sure there's things I missed. I feel like there was a lot of kind of parallels and, you know, real life metaphorical things happening as well 
Um, so let me know if I missed anything in the comments down below or if you have a different opinion. Uh, as always, if you want to watch the full reaction and support what I do, that's up on Patreon. Next week's reaction to the episode of Angel and probably the next episode of Buffy as well will be out on Patreon now for early access. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, remember, be active, be mindful, and be a hero. And Drusilla, please come back to the show, please. We need more Drusilla.